Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. I've got a new project. Uh, this mill is a YCM-40 Supermax. Um, I think it was one of the better Taiwanese copies that came out. It came up for sale locally in uh, our Craigslist. It was uh, left behind by a company that made orthotics, you know, braces for, for the feet. Um, it appears that all it ever did was machine uh, kind of plastics, maybe some, maybe some wood because there's some sawdust on this thing. But uh, other than that, it looks pretty complete. Uh, I say complete, I mean overall it's complete. Now when I found it, the y-axis down below here, let me pan you down so you can take a look at the y-axis. So this is how I found it. Um, the servo motor uh, mount and the thrust bearing mount was missing or off of it. I did find it, I actually found two of them and they were both broken. So we'll take a look at those and uh, see what we can figure out what might have happened to them. Um, but uh, anyway, let's get back to the machine. Okay, the machine itself Let's take a look at the table. Looks like a standard, yep, it's a 49 inch table, 9 by 42. Um, it has more of a rigid head than my other mill does. Um, that is, it doesn't have the knuckle, so it's, it's a lot beefier. And uh, it has box ways on uh, the Y axis, and uh, it also has it on the Z axis, so they're box ways. The X has the traditional dovetail on it. Um, it has a power draw bar, um, the, the standard butterfly ratchet type. It looks like it had some sort of pneumatic brake. Um, overall, it looks really clean. It was complete, it has a five horsepower spindle motor on it, and obviously a variable speed head, which will set and fix and will uh, control it with a variable frequency drive. It's got a lube pump on it with a timer. It already has a cabinet on it. Um, the control was partially disassembled. Actually, it was very disassembled. Somebody started taking the wiring out of it. It was a PC-based control and I was looking inside the computer itself and the motion controller's gone. It appears to have had an acro loop motion control card in it. So that's gone. However, the servo amplifiers were still there and two of the servo motors were still on the machine. The Y-axis servo motor was missing and I think that is where the problem lied. Uh, I have a good friend of mine, Brian Lamb here locally, who's a very experienced machinist, uh, experienced in CNC, um, had his own uh, aerospace machine shop for many years. Uh, he's actually my mentor. Um, we were discussing it and we surmised that the uh, the castings for the y-axis uh, let me let me grab one of those here's the casting now this is actually was actually broken off uh, it still is actually the only thing that's holding it on there is I've got the four screws so the pocket that holds the thrust bearing was broken off the casting fits here on the machine like that. So what we think might have happened is that uh, a runaway occurred with the servo motor, maybe a broken encoder wire uh, or something like that caused the, the axis to run away and broke off the pocket. And there's not only one of these, but there's two of them, so they're both broken. And again, the, the Y-axis servo motor is missing in action, they're DC brush servos. So I think that's what put this machine out of commission, and I think it's why it was left behind in the building. The new owner bought the building and found this in a kind of an outbuilding where they were doing the machining for the orthotics. And uh, he listed it on Craigslist, and I found it as an opportunity to, you know, rescue another machine and maybe make a few bucks in the process. And it brings me to another point. If you look hard enough, there are purpose-built CNC machines that are ripe for retrofitting. This, this happens to be a good example of that. I know a lot of you have considered taking a manual machine, converting it to CNC, but uh, 
it can be done, has been done, and as far as Bridgeport type mills go, I think there are a lot of manufacturers out there that sell retrofit kits where you can get ball screws and ball nuts and the yoke and all that to refit them. But I think in this day and age, there are a lot of machines out there that are purpose-built CNC machines, and you can save a lot of money by looking for one of those first and then refitting it with a new control perhaps or new motors. And as far as plans for this machine, it's going to be another centroid control. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be an all-in-one DC or um, their other board, the Oak. Um, I'm considering replacing the two DC brush servos with uh, some AC servos. I've been chatting with another company called DMM Technologies. They're out of Canada. They've been around a while. Um, I've seen a lot of other users have good luck with their AC servos and their DYN uh, servo drives. So I'm considering trying them out and uh, seeing how it goes. They've been extremely responsive and helpful in answering my questions that I've sent to them via email. They're very prompt. I mean, within the next, same business day, in most cases, they've gotten back with me. They've done many uh, systems that have retrofitted emails like this. Um, we're looking at 750 watt servos on X, Y, and Z, which is kind of overkill um, as far as AC servos go. Uh, 750 watts is about one horsepower. So um, looking at their DYN4 servo drives, and again, uh, uh, starting to talk to Centroid about another controller for this machine. Looking forward to tinkering with this one. Um, my daughter owes me some favors, so she's offered to clean it up, or she got volunteered to clean it up, which wouldn't be too, won't be too bad. I think most of what you see here is just you know a film of oil with dust over the top of it from sitting for, for so long. Um, the motor's off of it. Since this head doesn't tilt and it has to, had to come through a seven foot door, I pulled the motor off of it and I pulled the power drawbar off of it as well so we could get it in here. Um, it has nice limit switches on it. Um, the Yamatakis. Um, <clears throat> after refitting my other machine, uh, my other knee mill with uh, Honeywell slash Panasonic uh, rollers, um, I looked at this and I'd kind of like to find these instead. The reason being is those roller levers um, take up or they need a lot of, there's a lot of uh, travel in them before they trip. Where these are, this is a very standard robust CNC limit switch and you know it's got trippers on the bed here already and um, so it's one switch and either of the trippers trip it the y-axis has two switches on it but there's some things to be uh, learned from this per particular design um, as far as the the y-axis repair uh, I'm talking to Brian I think what we're going to do is we're going to create a steel uh, pocket um, basically a chunk of 1018 cold rolled steel gonna mill a pocket for the thrust bearings and then the flange will match the flange on the knee here and then we'll, what I plan to do is mill out a pocket here in the mount the depth of the flange that we use and then sandwich it all together and then there will be a retaining plate over the top bolting to a steel flange to retain the thrust bearings so that's how we're going to attack this uh, repair and make it better than it was since it's happened twice in this aluminum casting. And look forward to some videos on this Supermax YCM40 in the future.